So this comes out of the book, uh, my book that comes out, Canoe Nation, um, Race, Gender, or uh, Nature, Race, and the Making of a Canadian Icon, which is out with uh, the University of British Columbia Press. Um, and uh, essentially in the book, there's a broad argument that the canoe as a, as a national icon really works as a fetish upon which white Canada writes its environmental and, and you know, historical fantasies of what has happened and what, what goes on here. Um, so it tells uh, a couple different things. First, it tells a story of, a uh, particular story of colonialism uh, through the canoe, um, looking at how our um, historiography of the canoe, the way we tell the story of the canoe as an important aspect of, of nation building, um, celebrates the connection to First Nations that the canoe offers, but at the same time limits the actual influence of First Nations peoples and communities in the contemporary nation and, in fact, in the way in which it understands the development of the nation. Um, a second kind of theme running through the book is that, as a fetish, the canoe works through the field of leisure to assert a kind of depoliticized idea of the nation. Um, a nation that comes merely from our interaction with the territory, with the landscape, uh, as opposed to a nation that comes out of a whole series of economic, social, and political negotiations. Um, and leisure does this by um, sort of making a connection between our contemporary sort of leisurely experiences of the canoe to the field of the canoe as a um, political and economic tool of, of nation building and sort of making a, a broad parallel as those are the same things, something that I'm going to touch on later uh, today. And I think the third kind of arc that, that I try to paint in this book is that you can actually see this um, dissociation of leisure and politics in the kind of environmental message that the canoe has taken on. Uh, so used by individuals and by conservation groups as an example of respectful in interactions with nature, the canoe and the leisured experience of it comes actually quite specifically from a very industrialized background, right? Leisure um, is uh, outdoor recreation and outdoor leisure is a real sort of um, push that comes from the, uh, the urbanization and industrialization of North America. And the way in which the canoe figures in that is really as a respite, as a kind of rest cure, that you go out there and you come back and then you're much more productive and, 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 and set there. And, and, and you know you can be better workers and, and so on. And so uh, I think we have to understand that sort of implication between our leisure um, experience of the canoe and any kind of environmental message we take from the canoe because what that means is that at, fundamentally at the heart of uh, this icon of the canoe is a split, a very sort of drastic separation between humans and nature and that our only option is really to recreationally engage with nature as a respectful form and, and for those who promote the canoe, the best way to do that is, is through the canoe. And I think that's an important uh, marker to note um, that the canoe promotes this dualistic view of, uh, of nature because it's, it does so very innocently and so that it actually hides um, the, the production of nature in that process, right? I think we've been talking for many years in environmental studies and in geography and, and sociology of nature about that dualistic split between humans and nature. Um, but what I think we can do in that discussion that, that keeps it important is understand the ways in which our activities and our mythologies and our, and our sort of discourses manage to produce that dualism without actually acknowledging it. So I think thinking about the canoe as a, as a productive way of looking at nature uh, in Canada is actually very important because it shows how that production of nature is very much a colonial one. It's very much based upon uh, an industrialized urban nation and one that's based out of a, a very specific idea of what a white Canada should look like. And so part of the narrative in the, in the book deals with how we understand history um, because that's certainly a fundamental part of the service that the canoe offers uh, to the Canadian nation. It's a very easy and attractive story of the history of the nation, right? Voyageurs, explorers, merriment all around, hard work, nature, and fun. But just as important as telling the history um, is in the myth of the canoe, the canoe actually acts as a kind of way of touching history, um, a kind of time machine to transport us back to the nation. And so the canoe here works as a bit of an embodied experience of heritage where you can paddle rivers to experience what early travelers did and gave, gain a fuller appreciation of the founding of the nation. Hey, okay. 
Um, so this is a $20 coin that came out on one side uh, that has a kind of modern b boy paddling a canoe. And if you notice the reflection in the ground, it's, uh, it's uh, a, you know, an indigenous paddler that we kind of see this connection between experience and, and past. And the embodied experience of the canoe can be found in the ways the canoe is marketed, right? Whether as uh, the proliferation of voyageur names and references, um, but also to the ways that space is produced for canoeing. So you think of uh, canoe routes, Boundary Waters is just on the uh, American side of Quetico uh, Provincial Park in, uh, in uh, northwestern Ontario. Um, but also the French River, about four hours north of here, is uh, a Canadian Heritage Riverway, and it was chosen because it offered, in the, the um, words of the management plans, um, uh, the one true remaining uh, place where the, the wilderness remains the same as when Samuel de Champlain first passed this way, right? So that this interaction with nature as it was when the original explorers came through is, in, is a uh, relic of our, of, our, of our past. And so today I want to speak more about that embodied experience of heritage um, and through the phenomenon, more specifically, of voyager reenactments, looking at the role uh, in that of how suffering uh, is a kind of uh, embodied experience that really depoliticizes our relationship to the nation.